Greetings! In this video, I'm going to provide some playing recommendations on Romanza, the classic classical guitar piece that just about everybody has either heard or knows how to play. This piece has a lot of tricky chord changes and requires a lot of strength to execute with clarity. So just bear in mind that if you're a beginning guitarist, it may take some time to develop the strength that you'll need in order to play these, you know, especially these bar chords that hold some of the inner strings in an awkward way and some of these quick changes that you have to make. Just take your time, find a speed that you can play it where you're not making mistakes. So if it means going extra slow and just doing it a couple of times until you run out of strength, that's okay. Your strength will increase over time. And as always, we want to not play through pain. If you have pain, stop playing until it goes away. Even if it takes a day or a week, your body will become tougher and your endurance will increase. We do need to build our endurance in order to achieve greater things. But the way that happens is by reaching our limits and then letting our body recover and become tougher. It's just like how if you're walking a lot, you get calluses on your feet or you work with your hands a lot or lift weights a lot. That strain on your skin, on your palms, turns into calluses. So your body can adapt to all sorts of things. And we need to pace ourselves. And we definitely need to learn to listen to our body. It's extremely important if you're ever going to find out what you're truly capable of. That being said, let's go ahead and dive right on in. Before we actually look at any chord changes, I do want to emphasize that it's very useful to add a rest stroke with your ring finger on that first string. And also try to make sure you're putting in some vibrato in there. And that's going to be rocking your hand. Don't think about your finger. Think about your wrist or your forearm and getting a, a wiggle through your arm. That'll get a nice, broad, even sound. But rest free, free, rest free, free, rest free, free. You can get your hand really used to that. It's just going to help that top melody to really stand out over everything else that's happening. You can also add some nice slides in there. So right here, I do middle, and then I slide that. And it, it doesn't have to be super fast. There's a million types of slides. It's one of those things that you're going to develop an ear for it. But when do you want to do it? Do you want to do it earlier or later? In this case, I hang, and then do a not too fast. So practice that. I would encourage you to just listen, lo listen along with my video and try listening to that specific one and trying to match the sound that you hear. It's good to practice just a bunch of different slides. We've got the really whole fast, the pick slide. There's even trying to not, not really distinguish that first note. So there's very, very many ways to do slides, but bear that in mind, it's a great way to dress up this piece. Okay, so from the top, I like to do pinky, middle, and then I slide to G. Another thing you can do here is slide off of that F sharp. And it just adds a little bit of touch. Pointer, I like to slide pointer to B. And then here, if we put a little extra pressure in our index finger, we can get a nice stable alignment of our pinky. And then what I encourage you to do is mute, play slide. So index finger, little extra firm, gives stability to my hand. Not crazy hard, but not super light. In fact, I would encourage you to try pressing super light, try to aim with your pinky, and then try adding a little force and aim with your pinky and see if that helps with your stability and decide for yourself. I put in a little extra force, mute with my right hand, place and slide. But we want a nice, clean, we don't want this sound we get from touching a vibrating string without muting with the flesh on our right hand. So mute, place, slide. It's hard to do it so that it sounds fluid, but take your time, practice it, it'll get easier and easier. I like to just use my pinky because it sets me up for this position here. Here, I would just put a little extra force in that ring finger. It helps to guide that pinky into where he goes. A little extra tension, pinky is good. Now while we're here, we can align this middle finger. This one's sneaky because this third string is fat and that middle finger just doesn't want to grab that string as well. 
and the best thing you can do is align it nice and low and close. When I say low, I'm thinking really close to the B string. And then I'm gonna press firmly with my middle finger. If I do it confidently, I'm much, much more consistent with really grabbing that string. Here, obviously our ring finger. And we gotta put a lot of extra tension into this bar chord if we're gonna get these notes to sound out, especially when we're doing weird stuff with our pinky. It's just really, really good to have that force sustained because if we loosen up, we're gonna get buzzing and muting and things like that. So we need a very strong hand for this. Like I said, practice it, push your limits, and they will grow. And there are some great pieces for pushing your strength limits, by the way, if you're wanting to um, build your endurance. Um, Napoleon Koss, Opus, 19, Opus 38, number 19, is a really great hand workout. Fernando Soar also has a really, really great study in B flat that is absolutely relentless and takes a ton of strength. A lot of first position bar chords that'll strengthen your hand. Okay, so here I like to just open up my pinky. Here you'll see I'm not shifting my hand, which helps me to not get any of this intonation weirdness going on. I'm just gonna open my pinky and then very flat. I'm using a different set of muscles. Here's the push muscle that I use for my fingertip as opposed to this whole moving my pinky from the base onto that right there. Help Doing that helps me to really have a lot of stability in my hand. I'm not having to wiggle and mess up my intonation. And here I can actually Go ahead and put my ring finger on string one. As you can see, here I am playing the D sharp ring finger, and then I just slide it in and release the pinky. Now here, just like when we had, I put a little extra force so that my pinky has stability for grabbing this string. Now I'm gonna have this weird shift where I place my pinky and slide up. If I put a little extra force into my index finger, well that gives me that stability to place my pinky, I'm basically aiming for that C-sharp fret, and then slide up. So let yourself there it is. What I would let yourself do is just hold this and place on that C-sharp fret. And once your hand is really used to that, you're doing exactly that and then slide. It's not slide and place. You're gonna mute and, so here I mute, place, slide, hit. And we do it so quickly that the ear doesn't really hear a gap in the sound. There's a certain amount of time that the, of silence that the ear needs in order to really pick up on that gap in the playing. And that's how we cover some of these tricky chord changes. Extra force in the index finger, place, mute, slide. And it's gonna look like this. Here is something sneaky we can do. While I play that open E, I can place my middle finger on B. And then that gives me more stability when I'm grabbing these other two strings. So, anticipate and place the other two. Here, I would encourage you to really think about moving that pinky separately. Just move the pinky. It's not a hand movement. It's not a turn. It's not, you know, something like this. It's just my pinky moving sideways. I would try just this movement. Let's see if you can isolate it here. We don't want to mess up our intonation on the other notes. So try to really develop some independence. One thing you can do, instead of just E and E at the same time, you can split them. But I would try to have you arrive on the beat on that high E. Which means you put the low E right before the beat. Just watch out for that timing. All right, looking at the B section of this piece. I like to do pinky so I can slide up. We're gonna need a good amount of force just to make sure we don't miss either of those notes. Um, it's really easy to put not quite enough and have the G get muted or be on top of the fret of that pinky, you know, come out cruddy. So watch out for that. Here we, 
we want to align both of these fingers over their strings. So I come down, and as soon as I free up the pinky, I go ahead and align them. And then I free up my middle finger, and I align my ring finger. So now these fingers are both about a quarter of an inch away from the string. And then I just barely move them as I slide up. But this chord change is sneaky because we really need that melody to sound fluid and consistent. So we have to really nail that one quickly. And having it carefully aligned makes a huge difference. Putting a little extra force into the finger before the shift, as always, really helps us to grab with our pinky. So borrow that stability from your index finger, align very carefully, and then just barely move onto the strings. Aligned and drop. Now here I like to do something sneaky. This chord change is one of the hardest ones in the piece. And to try to go one, two, three, jump, it's doable, but it's really tricky. And I would encourage you to actually slide on that pinky. If we have a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, I'm gonna one, two, three. I just go ahead and pick a muted string. One, two, one, two, three and let that slide really be the note that stands out in that moment. The ear's never gonna really notice that it's missing that F sharp right here, and instead it's gonna be focusing on how the melody is sliding up to the next note. The melody is what stands out to the ear because A, it's the highest note, and B, we're playing it louder because we've been doing those rest strokes we talked about. So, see how smooth that sounded? So that's a great way in order to really cover over that gap that we're trying to cross. But another benefit of it is that pinky gives us stability. Watch this. I'm going to go to the shape I arrive at for this chord. I'm going to go from here to here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my pinky down until the last moment. So keeping my pinky down and then I switch and drop the pinky. Our middle finger can align over that third string, so it barely has to move, and our ring finger is really the only finger that has to move significantly far. I also have to scoot my index finger to cover the sixth string. So, what I would encourage you to do when we have a really hard chord change is to look at it one finger at a time. So for example, our index finger, what does it need to do? Well, it needs to go from here and just scoot up a tiny bit and grab string six. Our middle finger, all he has to do is hang out over the third string and then barely place onto it. Hang out, barely place. And then our ring finger has to come up to this first string from the fourth string. And I would practice keeping it nice and low so that you come up and hook into that string. Nice and low, barely come off the strings, just high enough to not get stuck on those other strings. So there's Three fingers really have to worry about, the pinky just releases. If you have any trouble with just doing that by itself, I would start with one finger at a time. Index, this shift. Okay, middle finger, all he does, little placement here. Okay, ring finger, can I do that? Okay, once each of those are easy, we're taking three component parts. Now we're gonna take different pairs of those components. So, Let's do our index and our middle finger. We have open with the middle finger to shift the index and place the middle. Just like that. Then we have, let's forget about the middle finger and let's do index and our ring finger. We have here to here. Ring finger moves up to first string, index covers all six strings. And then the only other configuration we have left is dealing with the middle finger and the ring finger. So we have middle finger hovering, ring finger on the fourth string, and then we just place the middle and bring up the ring finger. Once you've done that and then sleep on it, it's gonna be a lot easier to put all three together. So I have my B7 chord, and then what's gonna be a B7 chord with the C sharp in the melody. Just nice, small movements. And here we've taken the chord change and we're just doing it in place. 
once that's easy for you, then try doing it up a step and adding a little bit of a shift. And once you can do that very consistently, all right, let's take it a couple of frets, a couple more, and so on. And you could even take it further if you want to be really pushing your skill level to the max. So that'll help you to conquer the shift. But another thing that we can do in order to make that even easier, if I keep my pinky down, that actually adds some stability and makes it a lot easier for that ring finger to grab the right spot. And here's what we're doing when we slide on our pinky. We're keeping it so firm into the fretboard that I'm actually aligning as I slide up and boom. At the last moment, I'm just lifting up this pinky. So here, I'm gonna leave my pinky down and here it's buzzing on the string because it's in a really awkward spot. But you can see if we keep our pinky down, it can add an extra degree of stability and I can use it to have something to anchor my hand and align these fingers that have to kind of move against each other. And I arrive, boom, just like that. So with all that combined, we can one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And it's a great way to smooth out that chord change. That was a ton of different tools. <laughs> but these are all different tools that we use as classical guitarists to conquer tricky chord changes. And I would encourage you, to apply these tools to every chord change that trips you up. And you're gonna see it's gonna raise your skill level very quickly. So put it into practice. And here we are. So we're at this B chord. See, sometimes people call this a B9. It's not, it's just a B7 chord with a C sharp in the melody. In fact, it's just a B chord. There's no seventh being played right now. So we've got a B7. I would say we're still playing a B7 just because it's kind of what's happening contextually. B7 still a B chord and then we have a C sharp in the melody because the melody is doing its own thing. If you were to have two different guitarists, you'd have someone playing a B7 chord while someone else is playing the melody. So they're not playing a B9, they're playing a B7. So this is a B7, this is a B, but in the context it's a B7. We have our C sharp in the melody here. I like to just flat finger this guy because trying to use my fingertip on this note, it just isn't very safe. Here, this part's a little interesting. We barely have to move. So for example, my middle finger just slides up one tiny fret. My middle finger, I'm sorry, my ring finger is on the first string and it's gonna barely move on to the second string. And this is something you might need to isolate. Just try moving that ring finger over one tiny string and then try doing that with the middle finger. A little tiny movement, keep it really small. If you do that, then what happens is here, I'm gonna put a little pressure in my ring finger so I can align my pinky nice and close. Boom, and it's just a tiny movement to go from here, here my pinky's ready, to here. Here, here. So see if you can just keep tiny movements. If there's something that's jumping out or doing something big and weird, that's what's gonna be causing you to miss this chord. We need to really buff out the extra movements and keep it all very small. I like to just reach up on the pad of my finger so that I, if I do something like this, it's gonna mess with my intonation. So I'm just gonna let my other fingers move somewhat independently and try to keep my hand very stable at this moment. So hands not moving, I'm just reaching up with my pinky. I stay on my pad, slide them up. I know we generally want to use our fingertips, but that's a really dangerous spot to try to get onto our fingertip. So we're just going to do the safe thing, use our pad of our pinky, and then move back on our fingertips. Now here's the interesting thing. If I want to get back on my pinky tip, especially from here, what we're going to do we're on our middle fingertip, put a little extra force in that guy, and that lets me align that pinky and get him nice and above the string, and then I just slide on down. So we've got pinky flat, because that's what we do coming up. We're trying to keep, we've got this E chord, we move up, we put our pinky pad in order to maintain our intonation, and then we just slide that thing up. got three of this guy 
and then we go back onto our fingertips. I press into my middle finger and it helps set up my pinky to get here. And then here, it's just gonna be a nice, good, big, wide stretch. There are a couple of options. If your hand won't stretch that far, I would encourage you to stretch your hand and get it used to it. We want to be able to not press and stretch because doing that really messes up our intonation. We need to be able to open up our hand. And one of the best things you can do is just really wide scales. But if you are adamant about not doing this angle, another thing you can do, you can tilt onto the side of your hand like this and get a lot more reach on your pinky. Another thing you can do is you can come out and use the pads. And it's a little bit easier to get a nice wide stretch than it is with your fingers curled. I like to use my index finger flatter like it's a mini bar chord and then that gives me a little bit more reach with my pinky. That's another technique you can utilize. So coming down, I'm going to put extra pressure in my, well I guess I should start flat on pinky. Flat on pinky, tip, extra pressure on the middle which lets me get onto my tip. In here I'm going to align both of these fingers. I'm not going to pull them. Here they're nice and close together, but all I have to do is just align them to the string, and then when I shift, they're gonna naturally pull close together. So don't worry about them being in the exact position they're going to be in, just align them to where they're gonna grab that string cleanly. Align, grab. Nice and firm because these guys really wanna buzz. I can align my middle finger. This obviously is pretty basic. I would use the pad of my pinky so I'm not having to shift over and mess with my intonation. So those are all sorts of suggestions on how you can conquer these chord changes. If you have any doubts about what I was doing, I would encourage you to watch my video and see what you think of how it sounds. That's how I approach it. That's how I approach all of these chord changes and it works well for me, I think. I like how my recording sounds, but you're free to have your own opinion if you differ. But I hope that this was helpful to you. These are some strategies for conquering tricky chord changes. And like I said, this is a pretty difficult piece. It surprises me how many people try to play it because to play it well takes a great deal of precision and control. But it is a great way to push your limits. I would encourage you though to find a speed in which you're not repeating a lot of mistakes. If you're making a lot of mistakes, you're teaching your brain to do those automatically. Repetition teaches our brain in a very big way. So be careful about that. If you're consistently making a mistake in one place in this piece, then play it at a speed where you don't. And you need to be patient and really push yourself to reach a higher skill level. And it's gonna take a lot of self-discipline and control. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this helpful and you'd like to help others find this video, then I encourage you to like and subscribe. God bless.